It's time. Time to get credit for the work you've done. Time to get the recognition you deserve. With Purdue Global, you can move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself. You're worth the investment in yourself to earn a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will respect. Purdue's online university is designed to support working adults like you who know it's never too late to accomplish your goals. It's never too late to make a comeback. It's time to start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 26, Frugal Cooking. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen. This is Jill. And we are your hosts for the Frugal Friends Podcast, hanging out with you for another week of frugal goodness. We're and still here. Tips. We haven't gone here. away. We're not going anywhere. No, we're consistent. <laughs> That's a sign of a healthy relationship. You have a healthy, yeah. consistent relationship with the frugal friends. We are dependable, for sure. <laughs> and, and today we are dependable in bringing you more frugal tips from our latest interview with Jess Dang of Cook Smarts. You know we've been talking about Cook Smarts uh, for the past few episodes, and it's not because that they offered to sponsor the show. It's because <laughs> it's because I emailed and asked, "Am I allowed to talk about you on this show?" <laughs> That's literally how it worked, uh, and and then Jess was kind enough to offer to actually come onto the show and share a little bit of her story and give us some tips for frugal cooking. So we can roll right into our sponsors because uh-huh. we're going to go with our unofficial, not sponsor, Cook Smarts. And if you listen all the way to the end of this episode, you will hear a special coupon discount code. But even if you have to leave us midway through, you can get three free weeks of meal planning uh, from Cook Smarts. And it's a great all-inclusive like service that offers recipes, instruction videos, one-click grocery lists. So definitely head over to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash CS to check out more of what Jess is doing, and you will hear a little special something at the end. Ooh, a little treat. A little treat. <laughs> yeah. This episode's also brought to you by borrowing. It's not just something you do at the library. This is a deeply rooted value in the frugal community, and you can try it out for free today. No money down. Need a nice pair of shoes and you know you'll only wear once? Borrow it. Thinking about buying a deep fryer, but you're not sure if it's going to be worth the investment? Borrow it. You can try this tactic with anything except for food and underwear. Borrowing, the better option to spending. Mm, I love that you added that fine print, Jill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I <Asterisk>. don't... <laughs> Not food or underwear. I don't want people to take me literal that you can borrow anything because there's certain things that you should not borrow. But borrowing, definitely a... Another lucrative sponsor for the Frugal Friends podcast. I don't know how we get them, Jill. I know. I we're just, know. We, we've we put out our feelers and they're like, sure. Yeah. It's all of our listeners, really. <laughs> they're just so good that anybody anybody we think to get to sponsor will, will come on, including yep. borrowing. Yep. All right, y'all. Let's get into this interview that we did with Jess Dang of Cook Smarts. She starts off with a really great story. And like I said, stay tuned to the end for a special discount code offer. Special treat. We are so excited to have Jess Dang from Cook Smarts on the show today. How are you, Jess? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on. 
Yeah, yeah, welcome. Awesome. So before we get into the questions, I would really love to know personally, how did you come to start Cook Smarts? Sure. So this is actually a bit of a long story, but I, I think a good one. When I was 17, I was actually diagnosed with hepatitis C, uh, this virus, you know, this is 20 years ago where, you know, little was known about the virus. And I was diagnosed because of a high school blood drive. I was donating blood to my high school. Um, and I received a letter a couple of weeks later saying that they couldn't take my blood because it tested positive for this virus. And, you know, then I just was led on this journey that of like, you know, just not really knowing what my future was going to look like, you know, my future health, like, was I going to live? Like, what would, did I have to go through treatment? And so long story short, I did go through one year of chemo and the doctors deemed me, you know, labeled me cured. Uh, but I was still like, really, you know, this, all of this had just like really shaken me to my core. I, I didn't really feel confident that like I was cured and I was going to be, you mm -hmm. know, okay. Uh, but the doctors told me just to like live my life as normally as possible. I would go in for annual, annual checkups and blood, blood work. And, you know, it always looked good. And I kind of vow, vowed to myself in the back of my head, I was like, okay, like if I live to see 30, then I'm going to like, you know, do something to help other people live their healthiest lives. And, mm. you know, luckily I did make it to 30 and I quit my, my corporate job, which was a really scary thing. Like I enjoyed wow. my job. I had a lot of financial security from it but it was just time. And so I spent that first year, you know, not knowing, you know, I was like, I wanted to help people get healthier. I love cooking and I really believe in the power of a home cooked meal to like nurture people's health as well as, you know, strengthen connections around the table, you know, with your family and your friends. But I, I didn't know like what people needed to, to do that. Like I knew that, you know, a lot of people didn't cook, but I didn't understand, you know, why, what were the big challenges people were facing that was preventing them from, from making dinner every single night. Mm -hmm. So I spent that first year just, you know, being in people's kitchens. I, I was an in-home cooking instructor. I taught teenage moms. I taught a class at, you know, a local high school. And that just gave me like a really good insight into why people, you know, didn't cook. They lacked time and they lack knowledge and the kitchen was like a pretty stressful place. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to launch a meal plan service because I thought if we gave people a meal plan every week, that like takes a huge burden off of their, their, their to-do list, you know, it saves them so much time, but I wanted to do something different than just like, you know, give them, give people a menu or recipes for the week. I really wanted to focus on the education piece so mm -hmm. that they were building their skills while they were cooking every single night. So it was like they were getting a mini cooking lesson. So we focused on knife skills, like how to chop specific ingredients so that like they would build their confidence in the kitchen. So each time they, you know, got in there, it wasn't this like daunting experience, you know, chopping their vegetables didn't take forever. And it became something that they actually enjoyed doing, um, hopefully over time. Yeah, that's so true. Cause that's, I think, the biggest barrier to entry, at least for me, because I am um, self proclaimed horrible cook, but it's mostly because I never like <laughs> learned how. I don't know how it is for you, Jill. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. And, and to know, yeah, what to do with different ingredients and how to cook them and what's the best way to prepare them. Definitely. And Jess, I love the personal story that you have connected to this, which we see so often in stories of frugality and then the intersection of that with one's health and wanting to spend smart to eat smart, to take care of ourselves well. And so, yeah, what you're saying about giving back to others, what was maybe lacking when you were going through your own journey, it's it's quite amazing. And I think that people can really latch on to, to personal stories like that and to have reasons behind what we do. We don't just be frugal just to be frugal. We don't just cook for ourselves just because we think it'll be fun. Like there's a reason behind it. Like you said, the connection with family members members around or friends around a home cooked meal, but also the health benefits of it. So yeah, really, really lovely backstory to Cook Smarts. Thanks so much for sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. And I, I think what you said is so true. It's just that, you know, we're not taught these things. It's the same thing in finances. You know, there are the, in high school, we're taught, you know, lots of important facts and things, but we're just not taught so many life skills. And I think something like, you know, caring for yourself mm -hmm. from a health, health standpoint is, you know, something that most people are not taught. And then they're kind of thrown out in the real world and 
forced to figure out how to do it. And it's kind of just no wonder that people really easily resort to takeout and prison foods because, you know, those things are very straightforward and their directions on the box. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so I think that these least life skills are really important and I'm, I'm so excited you guys are focusing on them. Yeah, we are yeah. excited too. Well, let's dive into the questions because I think these will be really helpful. Whether you're using CookSmarts or not, The you have some really great tips to share with us. And for the person who's too busy, because I think that's who most of us will identify with. Right. So what are some easy, quick solutions to making dinner happen? So unfortunately, you know, there's no magic bullet. It's just the same thing as like, you know, when you think about your, you know, your personal finances, there's, you know, it takes time to save, right? You know, Mm -hmm. and to me, I think we just need a mindset shift. And I think that's kind of the easiest way to go about it. It's like just with your personal finances, it's important to always be saving a little bit here and there, right? And that that adds up and you'll always be glad you put away those small amounts, you know, for your rainy day fund. And I think kind of the same thing goes for executing dinner and meal planning and meal prepping. You know, we're all really busy people, but we all have small increments of time. You know, we all have time to check Instagram and Facebook and all these different Mm. things. So I think it's about, you know, thinking of those small increments of time you have um, and just taking advantage of them to make dinner happen fast on a stressful weeknight. So instead of checking Instagram for five minutes, can you plan a meal or two for, you know, tomorrow and the next day? Mm. For me, like I love kind of ending the day watching a show, you know, I just like to relax. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also try to do that, you know, on my iPad while I do a little bit of meal prep for the next day. And it's not about, you know, I know we see all those pictures on, on Instagram, hashtag Prep Sunday, people who cook for mm-hmm. three hours and have like 10, you know, 10 to 20 meals and nice and the Tupperware. Beautiful Tupperware, <laughs> always. And the fridge that doesn't have spills all over it and crumbs everywhere. <laughs> No one's life is like that. Those are just for the photo shoots. And so to me, it's not about like these huge aspirations of like trying to find the three hours of time in your week. To me, it's really about, and I think that's just also too daunting for people. And I think like if that's the barrier to entry, like, you know, for most people, they're like, no way. Like, I don't really want to spend three hours on my weekend chopping vegetables and cooking chicken or whatever. But I bet if people look for small opportunities, you know, those, that, that stuff really adds up. So for me, it's like, you know, 30 minutes, I can watch a sitcom and chop some vegetables for the next day. And that makes a huge difference mm-hmm. you know, when you're getting home from work and I've got two kids that like things just need to happen fast. Mm-hmm. And, and so if the vegetables are chopped the night before, then dinner is just, it just, you know, is able to, I'm able to execute it so much faster. Yeah. I like that breaking it down into manageable pieces. I think that that makes it easier for us to swallow. And does CookSmarts assist then with how to meal prep? Is that part of what you guys do? Yeah. So each of our meal plans comes with a weekend prep section. And it's one of those things that's totally optional because we know like some people will not want to do it. Um, But you can, you know, on a Sunday, if you decide you want to get ahead on the entire week, we kind of break down all of the different things you can do, uh, whether it's making us, you know, making, getting your sauces ready or making your salad dressing, getting some vegetables prep. And we kind of anticipate like knowing that like, you know, some things are not going to stay fresh for more than Mm -hmm. three or four days. So we only put in the things that we know are going to stay fresh. Whether you do the weekend prep or not, we write our recipes differently than most recipe sites. We really believe in this whole concept of mise en place, like having everything in its place before you start cooking. And mm. so if you're um, you know, a busy mom, but you might have nap time, you can look at the prep for the day and kind of get that stuff kind of out of the way. So when it's time for dinner, you just have to do the cooking part of it. And I think that, again, is like a mindset shift of like reorganizing how your cooking process works so that by the time mm. cooking happens, happens. Everything you like, all the big things you need are done. You won't be, you know, in the middle of a stir fry and realize, oh, like I actually didn't chop the garlic. And that's the first thing. (laughs) And, you know, most recipes are written that way. Like it assumes that people have read through and kind of figured Uh, out, you uh. know, everything. And we assume that people don't do any of that work. (laughs) Nice. I never do. And then I, and then something's in the pan and it's like, oh, and then add this sauce to it, which you had to have already made ahead of time. So now the things that are in the pan are burning (laughs) because I've got to quick make the sauce that I was supposed to make before I put the things in the pan. Story of my life. It's a disaster. (laughs) Uh, And I like that idea of 
doing like little things when you get the time. Like, cause I have been that person before to spend three hours meal prepping on a Sunday and I just can't do it very often. But even if it's like 30 minutes while you're watching your evening sitcom or, mm. you know, during a lunch break or something just to get, you know, that night or the next day prepped is such a good idea. Yeah. So much more attainable. Yeah. Really taking advantage of those moments. It's such a good tip. Yeah. And it ends up being insurance because it's like, oh, you have that there already. It makes it just a little harder to be like, well, I'll do something else because you're like, well, I've already chopped X or made the sauce. So like I'm already, you know, like a few steps in, I might as well just finish mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And I've noticed that too for snacks or just grabbing things from the fridge. I'm more likely to finish up all the grapes if I have already washed them and I've cut them into, you know, portions that I can hold in my hand. It's yeah, it's so simple and so stupid, <laughs> but it makes all the difference in me eating my groceries or not. Yes. Yeah. Jess, I want to pick your brain on this one. So my husband does not really care for leftovers and he really likes variety. And I, I've heard this from a lot of people like leftovers are not a thing for them. Some people mm -hmm. are great. They can have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every single day of their lives. That's that's not my husband. So for those people out there who don't like leftovers, how can you get around that and eliminate food waste? Do you have any tips for us there? Yeah, I do. Um, so you, uh, there are basically two ways to meal prep, right? There are folks that will spend that Sunday and cook like four meals and they'll eat those leftovers the entire week. And then there are people who get their ingredients chopped so that all they have to do is, you know, kind of assemble or cook when dinner time comes. Um, so for those people that don't love leftovers, I clearly don't recommend that first, first option. <laughs> so I recommend the latter mm. and just kind of learning a few versatile meal templates. And what I mean by that is, you know, the meal mm. templates are like where the cooking process is the same, but you could customize with ingre whatever ingredients you have on hand. So a meal template could be like a stir fry or a soup. So like, you know, a stir fry pretty much the, whenever you make a stir fry, the, the process is the same, but you can, you can add whatever ingredients you want into it. Um, so let's say at the beginning of the week, you know, you chop some mushrooms, sweet potatoes, carrots, and broccoli, you pick four vegetables for the week. So one night you could easily make a bolognese with mushrooms, carrots, and ground meat, right? So like two of those ingredients can go into a really good pasta sauce. And if you, you know, you could make extra for leftovers for later, you can freeze that, that stuff works really well, or you can just make a portion for the two of you. And another night you could bake a protein and then roast some sweet potatoes and broccoli. So again, like two of the other vegetables that you've mm. chosen for the week. And then a third night you can end the week with a stir fry. Like I said, you know, the stir fry is a great meal template because it's so customizable. Like it's mm. to me kind of like the thing you should do at the end of the week with whatever you have left over because anything can go into it. Um, yeah. So you can do your stir fry with any protein. You can do chicken, mushroom, shrimp, whatever you have on hand that, you know, was on sale for the week and then add in your mushrooms, carrots, and broccoli. You know, some people do like the soup on Mondays, taco Tuesdays. You've kind of put right. <laughs> meal templates and just say like, these are the ingredients I've chosen for the week. You know, these are the vegetables and protein and, the, you know, just changing up the style in which you make them, like makes mm. them feel like different meals. Right. Same ingredients, but maybe cooking it differently or putting it with a different side. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. helpful. Yeah. So other versatile templates that we use a lot at Cook Smarts are fried rice, you know, get anything going there, soups, chilies, a burrito, you know, you can have like rice beans and throw anything else in there, right. salads, quesadillas. So we just like to think about leftovers, like this whole concept of repurposing leftovers. How do you mm. like make leftovers something new again? Mm. And we actually have, the Cook Smarts has, actually has this really great infographic called How to Repurpose Leftovers. That gives you ideas, you know, on how to repurpose these leftovers based on what leftovers you have. So if you mm. have sausage or shrimp or lentils or veggies or tofu, we'd be like, oh, here are the things, you know, that you can make based on those leftovers. So it feels like, you know, you're making something new and you're also saving time because you're kind of cooking, cooking once, but, you know, making two different things out of it. Right. Yeah. I have seen your infographics and they are phenomenal. So good. So helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and that's another, like the whole thing about like education, right? Like education has like, you know, people want to mm -hmm. learn in a fun way. And so we feel like if you throw something in a fun graphic and break it down into, <laughs> into small steps, it just helps people enjoy, and, you know, kind of, we all eat with yeah. our eyes first. So mm -hmm. then the yeah. way, like, infographics takes that approach as well. 
that's probably why so many people are into meal prepping is because the pictures do look so good. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want my fridge to look like that. It never will, but I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like those people must have like a spare fridge that's like not <laughs> yes. I hope so. used for anything oh, else. Oh, definitely. It's a fridge in a studio. I doubt it's even cold. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because if it was cold, like, yeah, the, the, the containers would kind of like fog up. Yes. Ta- yeah. Like there'd be condensation, but they're always like clear and perfectly. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It's probably behind like the some scenes, sort of guys. Yeah. This is what goes on behind yeah. the scenes of Instagram. Don't be mm, fooled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, This means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just $15 a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, Take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. Oracle.com slash strategic. All right. So for the person who just hates cooking in general, which is was me and kind of still is me most days, um, where should they start? So I'm going to, I'm going to throw that question back at you. So if it was you, like, how did you make that change, you know, shift your mindset to start cooking and maybe not love it, but not hate it as much as you used to? It was, oh gosh, turning the tables. Um, yes. So we had to do it to, cause we paid off uh, $78,000 of debt in two years. And so That's amazing. Congratulations. thank you. So it was kind of something that I knew had to happen. Um, so I just changed my grocery shopping habits to, to meal plan. Cause I'm a very like numbers and planning, like I'm not super creative. So I had to start planning different meals and looking up recipes on Pinterest, but it would take me forever. And then I would get the recipe so wrong, yes. oh. <laughs> but just like <laughs> practicing has has made it almost soothing, but it's definitely, I'm not creative in the kitchen. It's not something that I would do over like going out to dinner, but it's become like a, we're on speaking terms, me and cooking, you know, (laughs) we can be in the same room together. We don't hate each other. That's that's all you need. And so I think that's, you know, I've kind of two, two answers to your question. And the first one is like your, your kind of situation, like you didn't have an alternative, right? And I think a lot of people don't come to cooking until they feel like they don't have another alternative. Like when I was giving cooking lessons, the main people that came to me for lessons were moms and people who had just been also had gone through some sort of health diagnosis where it was like, wow, like I really can't continue on this path of takeout. You know, I had had one student who ate at McDonald's like once or twice a day and did, Mm -hmm. you know, a steakhouse lunch. (laughs) 
Wow. And oh, wow. So how to start his, he had a gas stove and like, he kept, he get, it was like, I think it's broken cause it won't light. And he just didn't realize <laughs> he had to like, let the, like, let, you know, <laughs> the lighter go on for most people. It's like, they don't decide that they want to cook until it becomes a necessity. And I think for mm-hmm. folks who have the option, you kind of have to like, maybe trick yourself into thinking like, there is no other option if you hate, you know, if you, especially if you hate cooking. And um, so it's like, you know, if you always have like the option of like, you know, you don't have to stand up, your budget is like pretty flexible, then you're kind of continue on your career current habits. Right. So I think mm-hmm. a lot of it, you just have to trick yourself to be like, well, there is no other option. And then also just like take baby steps, right? Like no one starts off running a marathon by running a marathon. Everyone, you know, <laughs> yeah. not if you're wise at yeah. least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and lots of people like run marathons that hated running from the beginning. Right. But uh-huh. they like want to like achieve that goal. So if your goal is like, I want to be cooking more, you know, I want to be cooking most of my meals. Like don't start by cooking all of your meals, start by cooking one of your meals. And I think that again, it's just really about these like small incremental shifts yeah. in your mindset. And that really can help you know, your behavior change. And I think for a lot of people, once they start seeing the results that like, yeah, they're not mm. bad cooks. The only reason they were bad cooks is because no one taught them how to cook. You know, I think that yeah. you just gain confidence. And I think like if you start with just looking at your local area and finding a knife skills class, I think getting some good knife skills under your belt makes a huge difference in your, you know, appreciation for being in the kitchen because it doesn't yeah. feel like you have no idea what you're doing. So if you get, you know, you go to a, like a one to two hour class and then all of a sudden I think you'll see like, oh, like I actually can use a knife and it doesn't take me forever to cook. And I think that that really helps decrease mm. the the hate, the, the hate <laughs> of the cooking. I like that. It's kind of setting yourself up for success too. And what you're saying of the baby steps, but also being able to see, oh, I did that and I had fun or I enjoyed it or it tasted good and not to throw everything at yourself at once, but being able to say, will this be an attainable thing and be able to see the success that you've achieved to then inspire you to do more and learn more and cook more. Yeah, exactly. We do take those little things for granted, uh, like knife Mm -hmm. skills. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like it's like throwing someone into the water who's like never swum before without like a floaty, you know, it's like amazing that we don't give people more instruction on how to use them. Even if you hate cooking, you probably know somebody in your life that doesn't hate cooking or actually maybe even loves cooking. So I think like spending some time with them and like getting, you know, convincing them to let you spend some time with them in the kitchen. I think a lot of that enthusiasm can be infectious. And so I think if you kind of see why someone enjoys cooking through their eyes, maybe like, mm. you know, you can kind of adopt, adopt Ooh, some of those. That's a good yeah, tip. That's a great Pull idea. on that community. I like it. Jess, speaking of knives and knife skills, referring to kitchen gadgets. So I'm a little bit of a minimalist in the kitchen. I really don't like things all over my counters or cluttering my drawers. I do recognize the importance of a good knife because that really frustrates me. But what what would you say are the top kitchen gadgets to have and what are the ones that we can just pass on? They're not that important. Yeah, I'm actually quite a minimalist too. For someone that cooks a lot and sort of for a living, I don't have a very like... I don't have every, every gadget or piece of equipment. And if you open my pots and pans, I think people would be surprised like how few I have. Uh, So I think a lot of, yeah, definitely having a good knife and a good knife to me is like the best knife that you can afford. It doesn't have to be, you know, something really expensive, but it's a knife that like, you know, most knives you buy will start off sharp. It doesn't matter like if it's a $20 knife or a hundred dollar knife, but I think the main thing is like maintaining it. It's just like, it doesn't matter like Mm -hmm. how, what kind of car you buy, you want to take it in for its tune-ups, right? You want to like take it in and get its oil changed. Same thing with the knife. You know, you want to take care of it and make sure you don't like throw it in a drawer and just like, you know, let it bang around with other things. Um, So to me, it's more about like, you know, having a few things and really understanding the kind of cooking you do. But I think really like most people, like if you have a good knife, you have a cutting board, that's all, you know, like, and to me, most cutting boards strangely don't like, they're not very safe in that they like shift around when you're, when you're chopping on Mm -hmm. them. I don't know if you guys have Uh noticed it but you just fold up a kitchen towel and put it underneath there. And that will make your, your, you know, that'll stabilize your cutting board and make such a huge difference. Nice. So maybe not so much gadgets, but I think a lot of it, it's just the organization of your kitchen. So like if you have, 
I have like a little prep station set up. Mm -hmm. So in my prep station, you know, the kind of the, the equipment that I have in there are my prep bowls. And for people who are short on space, there's these great collapsible prep bowls that also come with lids. So you could, you know, pop them open when you're prepping and then collapse them for storage and also to put in the dishwasher, use the lids if you are doing prep ahead of time and they make a huge difference just to kind of organize. You know, I think so much of like if your cook, if your cooking process is organized, it just makes you feel so much more like Zen in the kitchen versus like, oh my God, there's stuff everywhere. Wow. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So other other things in my prep, you know, station is is my salad spinner. I I think it's one of those things where people think a salad spinner is only for salad, but I actually use it as my like colander for everything. Hmm. Uh So I washed all my veggies in it. Um, and it's just, yeah, we, we just use it for herbs, for vegetables, for fruit. Um, we don't always use the spinning function, but if you have a salad spinner, you don't also need to get a colander uh, Mm. thing. Okay. Yeah. And I think people also just forget that like, you know, to have like a little packing away area and you don't, there's no like specific gadgets associated with that, but I've really invested in a couple of things to like reduce my use of plastic or like saran wrap. Mm -hmm. So I have these things called food huggers. They're these really, they're silicone and they hug onto an open can or an open jar or half an onion Mm -hmm. or half a lemon. And I have these plastic bags that are reusable. So I don't have to like use, you know, a Ziploc bag, all, you know, lots of Ziploc bags. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And then that's where I just keep my like Sharpie and a, some masking tape. So when I, you know, pack things up in the freezer, all that stuff is just like nice and handy to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there any gadgets that you think are not super necessary to have in the kitchen? So not so much gadgets, but like, I think a lot of people they see like sets of things like knife sets or pots and pan set. And like, you know, they make them sound like a really good deal because instead of one pan for, you know, 30 bucks for like a hundred bucks, you can get like six pans mm. or something like that. But like a lot of those things are not like the right size for your family or like the cooking you do. Right. Yeah. So I think you really have to understand, like if you're cooking just for two people or if you're cooking for a family, like what are the sizes of pots and pans you really need and mm. forget about the like, the sets, like just buy the things a la carte and same thing with knives. Like most people, I'd rather have like two good chef's knives and like a whole set of like knives where like more than half of them. I'm like, how do I use this knife? Like what yes. is this for? Yes. I said goodbye to the kitchen knife block because I don't like it taking up space on my counter. And I always go for one of them. That's it. I use one, maybe two. Exactly. I think if you bought one of those like pots and pans set, there'd be like two or three that you'd end up using all the time. Mm -hmm. And the rest are like, then, you know, kind of what's the point? So to me, I think like just understanding what your cooking needs are. So like there are lots of gadgets that are really helpful if you will use them, right? Like every gadget mm-hmm. is helpful so long as you use it. So if you're someone that like makes a lot of smoothies, get up like, you know, a blender is useful, but it's like, if that's something you'll never do, then what's the point of having a blender? And in the last couple mm-hmm. of years, the two trendy gadgets have been the spiralizer and the instant pot. Uh-huh. And if you're someone that really loves making vegetable noodles, then get a, like, you know, like clearly get a spiralizer. But if it's something like you think you want to just like do once and try, like, you know, I'm sure a friend of yours has one. <laughs> Borrow it. Yeah. Like, yup. <laughs> I know lots of people have got on the, like, you know, that like love their Instant Pot. Like I use my Instant Pot many times a week. So it's been definitely Ditto. worth it for me. Yeah. But it's like, you know, don't get it just because it's like trendy and everyone else, everyone seems to be getting one because unless it really fits into like the food you're going to eat and the kind Mm. of the, you know, the cooking that you do. Thank you for that freedom. I do not have an instant (laughs) pot and I actually hated my crock pot and I sold it for $5 at my yard (laughs) sale. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. I like was late to the instant pot train, especially like considering Uh I'm in the whole like food, you know, being in this area Mm -hmm. of cooking. But once I got it, I was like, wow, this thing is amazing. And I actually got rid of two of my slow cookers because the instant pot has replaced them both. Uh So that's actually helped me free up a little bit of space. Yeah. Yeah. I got it because I hate using the oven in the summer because we're in Florida and it's so hot. So I wanted to like commit to doing instant pot summer. And so I did Mm -hmm. so many things this summer with the instant pot. It was great. And it didn't heat up my house during the day. And I didn't have to leave the slow cooker running all day. Yeah. Yeah. For the people that use it, and I think it's Mm life-changing, if you do not use it, then it's just like a waste of space. Yeah. (laughs) As is everything, right? Yeah. That's such a great perspective. Yeah, it's great. Well, 
I think we can introduce Jess to our favorite time of the week. What do you think, Jill? Oh, my word. I think it's about time. And it is it is my favorite time of the week. It's time for... The Bill of the Week! That's right! It's time for the best minute of your entire week! Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the bill of the week. Okay, so I had to think long and hard about this. because <laughs> I, I receive lots of bills as a business owner. You can imagine I have lots. We, we work with yes. lots of vendors and contractors. So I receive lots of bills. So, but, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. And think more like, I guess when you're building a business, like you're, you're kind of always saving for things. So like, instead of like, I guess, I guess you can think of it as like, I got a bill for something like a project I wanted to do. And then I had to like save for it and then, you know, pay it off. So one of the things I'm most proud of this year is our meal plan developer, Jess, li- who lives in Kansas city. She's wonderful. She's been in the company for three years. She was able to take a three month maternity leave. So that was kind of like, I guess you consider like we, and we, it was a paid maternity leave. And for a company that's Whoa. only got four people. That's wow. like a big deal. Like is. an employee for three months, but like we were able to kind of like pay that bill off in the sense that like, we just knew it was happening. Right. So we like, were able to, like, I was able to kind of like save for it. Um, mm. and you know, so I could hire someone to kind of like help do some of her tasks and just make that happen. And so we're just like, I just feel so proud because wow. something like that's really important to us because like, you know, everyone that works for me is like, like family. And we of course wanted to give her that green you know, benefit and time to spend with her little one. Oh, that's amazing. As a small business, I thought that was like really, really. Yeah. It is. That's, Planning ahead and yeah. valuing your employees. My goodness. That is definitely one of my favorite bills uh, mm-hmm. that we've ever had. I love that. Uh, that's so, not, thanks, thanks. Yeah. thanks for letting me twist the, the, the you know, the meaning of bill a little no, bit. No, not twist oh, it at definitely. all. Definitely. We leave it really vague <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> so, awesome. so for things you like make this. it whatever you uh-huh. want to make it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you want to leave a bill of the week with us, if you think you can top paying for your employees maternity leave for three months, then frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill and leave us your fave. So we love it. This is nice. definitely the best time of the week. Yep. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles, and Toyota has them with more on the way. But we also know a BEV is not for everyone, whether it's because of cost, range, or concerned about finding a charging station when you need it. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon-neutral future. In vehicles and in manufacturing plants, too. In the years ahead, the materials used to make just one long-range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug-in hybrids or 90 gas-electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with a vehicle that's right for you. A hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or battery EV. So shop, learn more, and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late. Never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. 
Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. So, Jess, we want to get into some questions from the community. So we have a Facebook community, a frugal community, that we talk about all things frugal. And we've been talking about Cook Smarts on there. And we've gotten a couple questions from our listeners. So if we can kind of do like a lightning round with it's not it's two questions. But <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weather alert. So the first question is wanting to know what your best tips are for cooking for one person? Sure. So I'm actually going to go back to the leftovers question from earlier. I think yeah. it's very similar. Like, you know, if you are not, if you're cooking for one, you're likely again, not to want leftovers for days and days of the same thing. Mm-hmm. So you kind of just to take that same approach of like gathering a few ingredients, learning those custom, you know, those like super versatile meal templates. And that will kind of help you be able to like cook something new every day um, in, in small portions, but you can still prep those vegetables in large portions. Right. So you can like not uh-huh. feel like you have to buy like 20 things every single week, just buy a few things, but again, just like switch up the template. And so that you have a different meal. And this is something that like my mom used to do with like her best friend, like they used to cook together and split meals. And so like, sometimes it's hard to like scale a recipe down for one or two servings. So if you have something that you really love, like, I don't know, I made eggplant Parmesan the other day, but it's like, mm. you don't really want to make it for one. Uh, so if you like had a friend over and like, you know, made it together and split it up, you know, it feels a little bit less like yeah. you, you're not ending up with a humongous casserole. At the yeah, end of that's the night. great. Yeah. My tip would be to just invite me over for dinner if you're cooking for one. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll come eat the rest. Yes. I also yeah. recommend that. <laughs> invite Jill over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that plug. <laughs> Yeah. And I think like, you know, especially if if you're still like single and like you're like your your post you know, work life is pretty flexible. Like you guys, you can find like a couple of friends and do sort of like some like dinner co-op thing where like, I don't know, you took turns, uh, mm. you know, one person is always as Mondays or Tuesday, you know, like, and then you kind of just like switch around. I think that like makes a huge difference too. Well, I heard Ooh, this tip like recently, that. um, like last week and apparently there are like freezer meal parties where people will get yeah. together and make like one freezer meal or or something and make it like two or three times and then get with two or three people and then you give them the rest of your freezer meals and they give you the excess of theirs and so you leave with you know two or three different freezer meals but you only had yeah. to make you know one recipe three times yeah, exactly. I think like just like community makes like such a big difference, kind of like yes. scaling that way. Oh, and speaking of freezer meals, I, this is an uh, this is an answer to a question you did not ask me. So I'm just like, <laughs> please give us all the answers. When I think when I think of freezer meals, I often think about like people that just had a baby because we get this question all the time from Cook um, Cook Smart's mm. member being like, "Oh, my friend had a baby. Like, I'm gonna give cook them a freezer meal." So like, what my tip is, mm-hmm. yeah, what should I make? But my tip is not so much about like what to make, but like don't give them an entire casserole. Like divide. Mm-hmm. It up for them so that they don't actually then have to eat like a lasagna for like four days straight. Um, yeah. So this is what I did when I was pregnant was like, you know, even though I would make these like big casseroles, I divided them up. So like I will be eating it for like two meals max. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't want to be eating something super heavy for that long. Um, so if you could like do that for, you know, if you're bringing soup or stew over, like that's, I would do that the same way, like divide it up into like two to four servings. So that, you know, they and their partner can have it versus like just giving them a big vat of something to put in the freezer because then they like freeze the whole thing and then have to defrost the whole thing and then eat, you know, so. Oh, that is a good tip. Yes. Wow. Makes me want to get pregnant and so I can get meals from you, Jess. (laughs) Yeah. I I won't. Don't worry. <laughs> oh man, that's so I just much. Just want someone to portion it out for me. It sounds so nice. That's always the worst part when I bring home a whole thing of chicken, and I know I'm not going to cook it all at once. So I don't want to throw it in my fridge, and you got to portion it out and put some in the freezer to have somebody else do that for me. Yes, it makes a huge <laughs> difference. I don't think that's like I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's worth getting a task rabbit for that. Just be like portion out my meat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how busy. Own. Yeah, it depends on how busy you are. I guess that's true. Yeah, no. Sometimes, like, yeah, sometimes tearing up a rotisserie chicken. We we we'll, we'll do Costco chicken a lot, and then like the whole yeah. There's definitely to me like, oh, I have to like divide this humongous thing up into be you know. So yeah, yeah, that's a great tip. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> okay, so our next question from our community uh, is, so if you don't have access to fresh veggies, is it even worth getting frozen? Um, or at that point, is it just like you could just get a fro- whole frozen meal at that point and it's the same? Oh, no, I think it's totally worth getting for, uh, frozen veggies. Our, my freezer is always <laughs> packed with frozen veggies. You know, we have broccoli, cauliflower, okra, mushrooms, just anything you can think of. Uh, to me, like, you know, frozen veggies, they are just usually just as fresh as fresh. Um, cause you know, they, mm-hmm. you know, whenever they package them, they're, they're packaged at their freshes. They usually are, bl- they blanch them. And so like the cooking process is actually even faster than, you know, starting from, starting from fresh. Um, and you, it's something you can get like really good deals on. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can find them on sale, you can buy them in bulk and, you know, you, you can buy them in bulk, um, large bags and then divide them up yourself, you know, easily at home. Our big thing is just to, like take a bag of frozen veggies and put them in the air fryer or put them in our oven and like just let them roast and they pretty much roast the same way they stir fry the same way so we are a hu- I'm a huge fan especially now with kids even though like I have good knife skills like some days like it is just so hectic that I'm like I did not have anything chopped and then you know I just pull a bag of veggies out and throw it in whatever we're making and it makes a huge difference mm-hmm. in like you know time time it takes me to get dinner on the table that's great. I'm so intrigued by your knife skills. I just like, where should I go to learn knife skills? So uh, this was, uh, this was like one of the best birthday gifts I've ever received. When I was like right out of college, my best friend got me a knife skills class. Oh my gosh. What a great gift. Whoa. Yeah. It was at like a local kitchen, um, like a local, like like small little cooking school. uh, And it just made such a huge difference. So we did all these, we did a bunch of things. Like we made salsa, like which involves chopping a lot of tomatoes and onions. So you, you know, but like, and they, (laughs) they taught us how to use different knives and it just made a huge difference. Like knowing how to hold a knife or like protecting your fingers from getting, you know, sliced open. Oh yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And it was like a two hour class and just like, you know, I use all those skills today still. That's amazing. I can't help but think of, have you guys seen that video of Ryan Gosling and Will Ferrell, like interrupting the Jimmy Kimmel show with, with knife guys? No, no, no not ringing a bell. <laughs> I, I'll post it in the show notes. It's so funny. Oh they're like gosh. knife guys, and they like talk about their knife skills, and they're trying to sell their like brand new knife. <laughs> it's it's really funny, but anyhow, it's making me laugh, but it's also making me excited to learn some knife skills. Yeah, it it'll make I mean, you will probably like I don't depending where your current knife skills are at, like it'll just decrease your time in the kitchen by so much. Just, you yeah, know, oh being gosh. able to know how to use a knife correctly and knowing how to chop certain things. Like, you know, like uh, there are certain things that like are such a mystery to people, like butternut squash. It's like, how do you oh chop this thing? I hate, I hate it. <laughs> I get yeah. scared cutting watermelon. That really, well, also it, you have to have a sharp knife. Like it doesn't help when you're, when your <laughs> knives are dull, which sometimes that happens, but watermelon scares me. I'm like, whoop, my fingers right there. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's also like a big heavy thing to wheel. But yeah, so if you got if you take a knife skills class and get whatever knife you have sharpened professionally, you know, just take it to like go on Yelp and look for, you know, knife sharpening and find take it to your local guy. Like uh, for wh- where we live, they usually have like a knife sharpening truck at the farmers market every week. Uh there's like All usually right. someone just like stationed there. And so maybe that's the case of your farmer's market too. But yeah, it's like it makes such a difference to like know how to use a knife correctly, hold it, you know, hold it correctly and also have a sharp one. <laughs> because a not sharp knife is not that helpful. Yeah. Jill's gonna turn <laughs> into knife girl. Yeah. Knife girl. Knife a knife ninja. Yes. Um Hey knifers. <laughs> That's what, that's what we're going to start calling our listeners soon. They're all going to take knife skill classes and they're all going to be knifers instead of yes, lifers. Exactly. <laughs> nice. This has been such a great chat, Jess. Uh, thank you so much for coming on with us. So what is going on at Cook Smarts now? And do you have anything coming up in the future that people should know about? So much is going on at Cook Smart. So we went through a big redesign this year. So the, the site is so pretty. It's just like makes you, you know, want to meal plan with us every single week or. Yeah, it does. 
or we make it like so easy that you don't, you don't have to think about meal planning, right? Like we've done all the work for you and just like, we've tried to make it as simple as possible. Um, and so, you know, we're really just like excited about all the new meals we have ahead. I'm headed to Kansas city later this week because our, you know, like Jen, you were saying you love planning. We also love planning. Clearly we run a meal planning service. <laughs> And so the, our, the, our team gets together once a year and we plan the entire next year's worth of meals wow. together. Wow. Yeah. It takes a lot of planning beforehand. Clearly, like we've already like brainstormed all the meals and have a good idea of like what meals we want to put in next year's calendar. Then we kind of do the whole like Tetrising and calendaring of everything and making sure like we're not doing too much salmon in any month or like all the days make sense in terms of like, we really like to, you know, reduce food waste. So we try to you know, make the Monday and Tuesday meals have like the most perishable ingredients so that like they don't spoil uh, nice. before you get to use them. So we think through all of that stuff and it's just really, wow. really fun. So I'm really looking so forward to that. So much thought so I don't have to think. Yeah. I you know, I think like <laughs> good meal, like, you know, good meal planning really takes time. And I think like, you know, you, I think lots of people should do it themselves because like, you know, it is really nice to have control over your meals. And if you're someone that's totally okay with wanting to, you know, like, if you have like a 10 to 20 meals that you really love and don't mind rotating through them, like totally meal plan by yourself. But if you're someone that really loves variety, but just doesn't have time to like sit through Pinterest mm-hmm. and look through cookbooks, like outsource it to, you know, it's like well, all of these, all of our meal, all these meal plan services or several meal plan services are all really quite affordable. And I think if they help yeah. you stick to a budget and stick to cooking, you know, they pay themselves off many, many, many times over, um, over the year. Yeah. Not to mention that, that there's something to be learned then in it and that people might even be able to taper off from, from different things that cook smarts offer because you've helped them enter into that new lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we, so we, we have a couple of things, you know, where we, a lot of people, you know, and the people depending on like their life stage, like some people, like when they're really busy are the ones like are, that's the time when they need us. Or sometimes actually it's that time that they don't need us because their life is like just too unpredictable and they don't know when they're going to be home and everything. Um, so it just depends on like what your needs are different at different stages of your life. And then we also have nourish our online cooking program. So that's like the program that really focuses on these skills, kind of these like very practical doable kitchen skills that everybody should have. But again, like we're never taught in school and we, you know, that's the thing where we focus on knife skills. We focus on teaching you these like versatile meal templates so that you can cook without a recipe so that you don't need a meal plan service. Right. So you can just look into your fridge or your pantry and say like, Oh, I have X, Y, and Z. That means I can make this because I know how to, you know, you use this particular cooking formula. Wow. I love it. Thank you so much, Jess. Thank you for having me. This is so fun to share all this information. Yeah. Rumor has it that you are providing the Frugal Friends listener with a little discount code. Yes, we are. Yeah. What, what? Yeah. So if you are interested in trying out Cook Smarts, um, Jess is giving Frugal Friends podcast listeners 25% off um, meal planning when you use the code FRUGAL. Uh, so definitely, like we've been talking about, head over to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash CS, uh, and then you can enter code FRUGAL for 25% off. Thank you so much for that, Jess. That's so nice of you. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, our pleasure. Well, have a great day, and we will uh, talk to you later. Thanks. Bye, guys. See ya. Thanks. Oh, Jill, I loved that. I loved all those Mm -hmm. tips about taking small bites of meal prepping Mm -hmm. uh, to get it done. You don't have to do three hours of it on Sunday. Uh, Yes, there's freedom in that. I also want to expand my knife skills. Uh, In case you didn't pick up on that before. I got it. (laughs) (laughs) She's inspired me. Yes. Oh, guys. Well, that's all we have for you today. That's all. I mean, that was a lot. And uh, I hope it's inspired you to expand your skills in the kitchen, do some more meal planning, um, and find some of those templates. We'll have links to uh, some of the infographics just mentioned uh, so that you can try out some of these meal templates for yourself. Uh, and uh, and I hope it lowers your grocery budget as a result. Yeah. And uh, so... 
For the rest of the month, we're still reading Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. And we are still giving away November's book, uh, You Can Win the More of Less by Joshua Becker. And if you want to win the free copy of November's book, we're giving away one for every five reviews we get this month. No limit. So to enter, leave us a review on your podcast listening device, not just iTunes. Screenshot that review and then email it to us at frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And we're going to select the winners for this book at the end of the day, at the end of the month. Like always. Yeah, which is going to be Halloween. So maybe maybe we'll announce it in some creative way. Who knows? Stay tuned. Yeah. If we put on Halloween costumes or something. <laughs> yeah. If you want to know what a really good review is to leave, it's from Frugal Young Mama. It says, I love this podcast. I love this podcast. It's fun, funny, and frugal. It's nice to have a lighthearted podcast about stuff that is so important, like finances. I feel like finances are something a lot of people don't like to talk about because it's serious. These girls find a way to make it fun and enjoyable to listen to. Thank you so much, Frugal Young Mama. Yes. We are glad to have listeners like you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you screenshotted that and sent it in for a, to, to win our next book. So you can still do that. So guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, wherever you're listening to this episode, and that will ensure that we come at you every Friday with all of our frugal tips and tricks and special gifts. And until next week, ciao. See ya. Ciao down. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. Uh, so Jen, I legit had a frugal fail today at the library and it started with me going to the library. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I, I, uh, rented, what, what would you, what do you do at the library? Do you rent the books? You borrow the books. Yeah. You sign out the books. I don't know. Take I them out. took yeah. out our next book for our frugal friends book club and i go up to the front i haven't been there in forever i'm just gonna be real honest with you and transparency she was like oh uh this is great but before i lend you this book you owe us money for the last <laughs> book that you got that was uh returned late and it was so long ago that i have no way of proving whether or not it was actually late it was only a dollar 35 but i was like are you serious yeah. I shouldn't have come here. I always just view it as a donation to our public library system. I don't need I to donate gladly. to them. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to donate to them to keep them going. They do so many great programs in the community. So your donation will not be in vain. Well, don't they get money from the government? Don't yeah, my tax like dollars already donate to them? <laughs> I'm just saying. Not that much. <laughs> I'd rather donate to hungry children. Does the library give to hungry children? It is a space that provides lunches to kids during the summer. Oh, there you, is. There you go. So, in defense of libraries. <laughs> okay. Episode episode 82. <laughs> That'll be your episode 82. We'll talk about libraries. <laughs> yeah. All right. I probably won't be around then. Nah. <laughs> oh gosh. Sorry. No, that's all right. It was just really loud. <laughs> it's okay. Just don't do it ever again. <laughs> uh, okay. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. 
Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.